Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our sixth lesson on the seventh topic of Form 3 work, which is called Electrostatics 2. As usual, let me comment by giving the quote of the day, which states that excuses are the rocks which crush our dreams. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at combination of capacitors and just like for resistors, we have two ways in which we can combine capacitors. One is what we call the series connection or combination of capacitors. Two, we have what we call the parallel connection of capacitors. So let's start by looking at the series connection of capacitors. So just like resistors, which we discussed in our current electricity too, we did say that um, when components are connected along each other, then they are said to be in series connection. So these are our three capacitors which are connected along each other. Therefore, they are in series connection. Then, under current electricity too, we also said that whenever components are connected in series, then to find the total voltage or the, uh, the, the EMF, or to find the total voltage, you simply take the sum of the voltage drops across each component. So the potential difference V across each capacitor is different. So that is to mean that if you are to find the total uh, voltage through that particular circuit, you simply take the voltage drops across each capacitor. So if you want to find the V total across the battery, you simply take V1 plus V2 plus V3. That is what we discussed under current electricity too. The other thing that you need to note, uh, that is under current electri electricity too, we also said that for any series connection, the total current entering a junction is equal to the current across each component, the current across each component. But under cells and simple circuits, which we discussed in uh, Form 1, we did say that uh, the charge Q can be given by the product of current and the time, that Q is equal to IT. So from this particular formula, if I take time constant, if I hold T constant, it simply means that the charge Q and the current are actually directly proportional to each other. So that simply means that the way current was behaving for uh, resistors is the same same way that charge will behave for the capacitors. So remember for resistors, that is under current electricity too, we did say that um, I total, the total current entering a junction is equal to the current across each component, the current across each component which is connected in series. Therefore, we are saying that the way current is behaving, was behaving for resistors, is the same way that charge will be behaving for the capacitors. Because from Q is equal to IT, clearly if you hold time constant, then charge Q will be directly proportional to current. Therefore, they should behave in a similar way. So just like I total was equal to I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3, now for the capacitors, Q total must be equal to Q1, must be equal to Q2, must be equal to Q3. That is, the charge is equally distributed on each, uh, that is, on each plate. So that is Q total, that is the total charge um, through this particular battery, must be equal to the charge across the a first capacitor must be equal to the charge across the second capacitor must be equal to the charge across the third capacitor. Then we also derived a formula for capacitance whereby we said that capacitance is simply, uh, that is, can be given by, the, the, the from the formula of capacitance, we said that charge Q can be given by CV, that is the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference should give you the charge. But I want to derive an equation, an equation for the uh, effective or the total capacitance through a series combination of capacitors. So from this formula, I want to make V to be the subject of the formula, that is potential difference. Of course, I'll just divide both sides by C, so that V will be equal to Q over C. Therefore, our equation 1, remember equation 1 was V total is equal to V1 is equal plus V2 plus V3. So therefore, our equation 1 will become... So the V total will actually become Q total over C total because V is equal to Q over C. Therefore, V total will just be Q total over C total. So this equation one will become V total will be Q total over C total. Then it's equals to V1. Now V1 will actually be Q over C. But now because we are talking of V1, we'll talk of Q1 over C1. So Q1 over C1, then plus V2, V2 will simply become a Q over C, which is just Q2 over C2. So Q2 over C2, then plus V3. V3 will now become Q over C, 
which is just uh, Q3 over C3. Then from equation 2, remember equation 2 was for the charge that Q total is equal to Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3. So if Q total is equal to Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3, it simply means that we can equate that particular charge to a particular constant because after all they are equal. That is the total charge through the battery is equal to the charge through uh, the charge across the first capacitor, the charge is equal to the charge across the second capacitor, is equal to the charge across the third capacitor. So if I let the, the whole of this capacitor, that is Q total and Q1 and Q2 and Q3 to be equal to a constant which is K, it simply means that my equation Roman 3 will become so where I have uh, Q total, Q1, Q2, and Q3, I want to substitute with K. That is in this equation, Roman 3. So this equation will become Q total. Remember, Q total is, is equals to K. Therefore, this equation will become Q total over, which is K over CT. So K over CT. Then um, again, uh, Q1 over C1. Remember, Q1, Q1 is equals to K from this equation. Therefore, this will simply become k over c1 so k over c1 then again q2 is equals to k therefore this will become k over c2 the hand k over c2 then lastly q3 is equals to k so this will become k over c3 so k over c3 then i want to eliminate k because after all it is the same so to do that i can divide each and every term by k alternatively you can also multiply both sides or each and every term by the reciprocal of k so multiplying through by 1 over k which is just the reciprocal of k so this equation will become so it will be 1 over k times k over ct so 1 over k times k over ct then is equals to 1 over k times k over c1 1 over k times k over c1 that is i'm just dividing each term by k then next we shall have 1 over k by k over c2 remember c2 is just this equation here then if I multiply the third term by the reciprocal of k, I'll simply have 1 over k multiplied by k over c3. So of course, k and k will cancel out. So k and k cancels, k and k cancels, k and k cancels, k and k also cancels. So this equation would remain as 1 times, uh, remember k has cancelled. So we are remaining with 1 over c total, which is uh, 1 over c total is equals to uh, 1 over c1. So this is 1 over c1 then plus 1 over C2, plus 1 over C2, then plus 1 over C3, plus 1 over C3. Therefore, for any series connection of capacitors, the effective capacitance or the total capacitance is given by the equation 1 over uh, C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So if you remember how we were computing for the resistors, you realize that for to find the total or the effective capacitance, is just the opposite of finding the effective or the, or the total uh, resistance because actually this equation was for the total resistance of resistors which are arranged in parallel but uh, now for capacitors when it is in series you, if you want to find the effective or the total uh, capacitance you simply take one over the reciprocal of the total capacitance must be equal to uh, the sum of the reciprocals of the capacitance of the individual capacitors in that particular circuit then just like we did for resistors in parallel we can also show that for any two capacitors which are arranged in series that that um, the effective or the total uh, capacitance must be equal to the product over the sum so for any two resistors so if we are talking of two resistors it means one over c total will be equal to one over c1 plus one over c2 because we are talking of only two resistors so if i find the lcm the lcm uh, for these particular terms will simply be the product of C1 and C2. So the LCM is C1, C2. So of course C1 goes into C1, C2, that is C2 times. Then um, uh, C2 goes into C1, C2, that is um, C1 times. C1 times 1, you'll just get C1. Then after that, I want to pick uh, the first term here and the last term here so that I have 1 over C total being equal to Remember, C2 plus C1 is just the same as saying C1 plus C2. Just like 2 plus 3 is just the same as 3 plus 2. So 1 over C total, which is uh, this term here, is simply equal to C1 plus C2, then over C1 times C2. If I take reciprocals on both sides, I'll simply have C2 divided by 1, which is just CT. Uh, that is C1 over CT 
if I take reciprocals, I'll just have CT divided by 1, which is just CT. Then the reciprocal, if I take reciprocals on the right hand side, I'll have the product coming up and then the sum coming downward so that I have C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So for any two capacitors which are connected in a series, uh, their total or the effective capacitance can be given by the product of the two capacitances or of the two capacitors divided by the sum of the capacitances of the two capacitors. Next, let's look at an example involving series connection of uh, capacitors. So we are told that three capacitors of capacitance 1.5 microfarad, 2 microfarad, and 3 microfarad are connected to a potential difference of 12 volts as shown. Find part A, the combined capacitance. So the key things to note for any series connection of capacitors, V total is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3, just like for uh, resistors. Then Q total is equal to Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3. Then the reciprocal of the total capacitance is equal to the sum of the reciprocal of uh, the number of capacitors which are connected in that particular circuit. So part A, they want us to find the combined capacitance. So because these capacitors are connected in series, then you have just said that for any series connection, 1 over C total is equal to 1 over C through the first capacitor. So 1 over uh, total capacitance through the 1.5 microfarad capacitor plus 1 over the reciprocal of 2 microfarad capacitor plus 1 over uh, C through the 3 uh, microfarad capacitor. So this will just be equal to 1 over C total is equal to 1 over 1.5 microfarad plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 microfarad, which is just equal to 1 over 1.5 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. If you compute on your calculator, you will simply get 3 over 2. So that simply means that 1 over C total is equal to 3 over 2. So if I want C total, I'll simply take reciprocals on both sides. So if I take reciprocal on, on this side, I'll simply have C total divided by 1, which is just C total. Then if I take reciprocal on, on this side, I'll have a 2 over 3, so 2 over 3. Therefore, C total is equal to 2 over 3 microfarad. So microfarad because this was in microfarad. But we know that the SI unit for capacitance is actually the farad. And uh, we said from our first lesson, uh, I think it was the second lesson on this particular topic, we simply said that uh, 10, power, um, 10 power 6 microfarad is equal to 1 farad. So if we want to convert the microfarad into farad, we'll simply uh, divide by 10 power 6. So if 10 power 6 microfarad is equal to 1 farad, what about 2 over 3 microfarad? So that will be 2 over 3 microfarad multiplied, uh, 2 over 3 microfarad divided by 10 power 6 microfarad multiplied by 1 farad. Then remember from the loss of indices, whenever you divide, if the number goes uh, to the numerator, it becomes the power becomes a negative so this is just the same as from the loss of indices this is the same as saying 2 over 3 multiplied by 10 power negative 6 farad so that is the uh, the combined capacitance or the total capacitance or the effective capacitance through our this particular circuit then we can also express it in terms of uh, decimals because remember in physics it is always recommended to leave your answers in decimal uh, form that is uh, fraction answers are not acceptable in physics that is as final answers so we leave our answer correct to four significant uh, figures but in this case i'm just converting it to uh, standard form because it is convenient so this will be c total is approximately equal to so if you take 2 over 3 multiplied by 10 power negative 6 on your calculator you'll obtain 6.667 that is recurring of course times 10 power negative 7 farad then question two, they want us to find the total charge. So we know that charge, charge Q is equals to CV. So if you want to find the total charge, we must have the total capacitance. You must also have the total voltage through that particular circuit. Of course, you already have the total capacitance because we have com calculated it here. So our total capacitance, I'll use the value which is not approximated. So C total is 2 over 3 times 10 power negative 6. So 2 over 3 times 10 power negative 6 multiplied by V total through the circuit is 12 volts. So 2 over 3 times 10 power negative 6 multiplied by 12. Of course, 3 goes into 12 4 times. 4 times 2, you simply get 8. So you'll get 8 times 10 power negative 6 uh, coulomb as your total charge through the circuit. Then part C, 
they want us to compute uh, the charge on each capacitor the charge on each capacitor remember from our previous slide we have just said that q total that is the total charge through the circuit must be equal to the charge across each capacitor so q total must be equal to q1 must be equal to q2 must be equal to q3 so the capacitance of the source that is the charge through the source must be equal to the charge through the 1.5 microfarad capacitor must be equal to the charge through the 2 microfarad capacitor must be equal to the charge through the 3 microfarad capacitor the reason being all the capacitors are connected in series with our battery or with our source of power therefore Q total is equals to the charge through the 1.5 microfarad capacitor must be equal to the charge through the 2 microfarad capacitor must be equal to the charge through the 3 microfarad capacitor. The reason is because the three capacitors are connected in series with our battery. Therefore, the charge through the 1.5 microfarad capacitor is equal to charge through 2, charge through 3 microfarad and we already have the Q total. Huh? The Q total is 8 times 10 power negative 6. Therefore, it means the charge through the 1.5, 2, and 3 will also be equal to h times 10 power negative 6 coulomb because for any series connection of capacitors, the total charge must be equal to the charge across each component. Then part D, they want us to find the voltage across the two microfarad capacitor. Of course, from Q is equals to CV, from this particular formula, we know that Q is equals to CV. If you want to find V, you simply make V the subject of the formula. So we'll just divide both sides by C. Therefore, V through the 2 microfarad capacitor will, will be equal to the charge through the 2 microfarad capacitor divided by the capacitance through the 2 microfarad uh, capacitor. So which is equal to the charge through the 2 microfarad capacitor. We already have it in SI unit, which is uh, 8 times 10 power negative 6. So this will be Q through the 2 microfarad capacitor is equal to Q total, which is equal to 8 times 10 power negative 6. That is in SI unit, which is in farad divided by the capacitance through the two microfarad capacitor. Remember, microfarad are not the SI units for uh, capacitance. Therefore, we convert it to farads. Uh, and we know that 10 power 6 uh, microfarad is equals to 1 farad. So what about 2 microfarad? So it, it will just be 2 microfarad divided by 10 power 6 microfarad times 1 farad. Then, of course, if we are dividing, if the number comes on the numerator, the power will become a negative. So 2 times 10 power negative 6. So this one is actually in farad. So times 10 power 6 power negative 6 converts the 2 microfarad into uh, into farads. So that each quantity is in its respective SI unit. So of course 10 power 6 and 10 power 6 will cancel out. Then 8 divided by 2 you'll obtain 4. So because this is potential difference, so it has to be in volts. Therefore the voltage across the 2 microfarad capacitor is 4 volts. Lastly, lastly, I have an exercise here which I recommend that, that you should try at your own free time to get your understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. In case if you have any challenges in handling any of the question, feel free to drop a comment specifying uh, the question that you need help in. And of course, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that excuses are rocks which crush our dreams so the quote is simply encouraging us to detach ourselves from all forms of excuses this is because excuses are dream killers therefore instead of looking for an excuse uh, of why you are not able to do something just do what you can where you are using the limited resources that you already have Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Thank you for the continued support. I really, really appreciate. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.